Good evening, everyone. Bezrat Hashem, Naseh v'Natsliach. Amen. Today's class is uh, sponsored Leilui Nishmat Chana Bat Rachel. Tia Nishmat Tzura B'Tzura Chaim. Amen. And also Golan Ben Chana. Tia Nishmat Tzura B'Tzura Chaim. Amen. Today we're going to speak about snow. We, just, we came here, it was cold a little bit. And we see that uh, Baruch Hashem started snowing last week. And people ask me, snow, what's the meaning of snow? What's the Kabbalistic meaning of snow? Why it's snowing in certain countries, in certain countries there's no snow? Why the snow is white? Why can't Hashem make it green and, uh, you know, different color? There's a lot of questions about snow. And there's a lot of uh, deep things that we can learn from snow. There's different powers to snow that we can use for healing. Bezat Hashem, we're going to study some uh, ways how to heal ourselves with snow. How can we use snow for memory, for... Uh, uh, for uh, there's certain mitzvot that we do with snow or actually mitzvot that we can't do with snow for example on Shabbat what to do with snow on Shabbat can we make uh, you know snowballs on Shabbat and play on Shabbat and different questions that people ask about snow maybe we're going to touch this also a little bit today and we're going to see some stories about snow and snowing. And another question that people ask me, is this a way according to Torah and Kabbalah to know if this year is going to be snowy or not snowy? If this is going to be cold, very cold? And we see that our rabbis used to speak about that. They used to know what year is going to be more cold or less cold there's a way to know maybe we're gonna we're gonna learn one of the ways that we can we can know if there's if there's gonna be more snow or less predict yeah in every place okay first of all i would like to start with um <coughs> with the snow if we look, Baruch Hashem, Kadosh Baruch Hu made in the world different things that brings water. One of them is rain, we have ice, and we have snow. And everything that Hashem does has a reason. It's not just because. It has a reason. Why there is rain and why there is snow. What's the meaning of rain and what's the meaning of snow? So according to Kabbalah, to Zohar, the Zohar says that the rain is a male and the snow is a female. It's a power of a male and a power of a female. And by the way, the Zohar says if you know, if you learn about snow, the way how the snow built, and the, the, the qualities of snow, you can know everything about a woman. You know all the, the, the qualities of a woman because she is like snow. And Behemet, the Midrashim say that the Yareach, Yareach is the moon, the moon was created with snow. Hashem took snow and made the moon. That's how the Midrash says. And we know that the moon symbolizes a woman. Female. Right? A female. Because the moon also has a cycle of 30 days the woman also has a cycle of 30 days and there's different things in the moon yeah the moon gets the light from the sun yeah same way usually women when they look for a guy they look for someone that will give them light you know i want a man <laughs> a man means he should give me and that's if you study the the moon and you study the snow you can understand the women so but this is a, dif a different topic 
usually when I speak about uh, marriage, maybe we'll get to this topic of of snow and women, because every man, before he gets married, he has to understand what's a woman. He has to understand who he's going to live with. The psychology of the women, this is one of the things that we do before we, before we get married. We study, the men study about the women, the psychology of the women, according to Torah. And the, and the, and the lady, she's studying the psychology of the men. To know how he thinks and what he needs. <clears throat> now it's very important because most of the divorce that happens, it's because the man doesn't understand the women and the women doesn't understand the men. They have misunderstanding. And that's what caused a lot of divorce in the world today. And also the, let's say the universities and all the smart people, the scientists, that they try to learn the psychology of the women and the psychology of the men, they would never be successful because the one that knows exactly how a woman works, it's only Hashem because He created the women. That's why the best source to understand the psychology of the, of the, of, of the women or, or the men, it's the Torah because Hashem created them and He knows exactly how they built and how the brain is built. Whatever we human beings learn, we learn from what we see. It could be right, it could be not. You know, psychologist. I, I have a friend that is a very big psychologist, and I speak to him a lot. And they have different theories, and he says that always, like the the, the psychiatrist and the psychologist, they they have different opinions, and they are not sure about things. And I know one person from my community that went to one psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist explained him his problem in a certain way. And then he went to another psychiatrist, and the other psychiatrist says, this guy is wrong completely, your problem is this. And then this poor guy went to another psychiatrist, and that psychiatrist told those, both people that are wrong, they don't know what they're talking about, that's your problem. And now he has four problems. <laughs> His own problem, and the three problems that the psychiatrist told him. <laughs> Misken. So, Bemet, the... If we want to really know what's the problem of a person, it's, it's only through the Torah. The Torah knows the, the, the deepness of, of the nefesh, of the, of the soul of the person. Anyways, snow, that's a woman. That's a female. Now, when Hashem created rain, we need rain. We need rain for living. You know, here in Canada, we don't feel it. But in Eretz Israel, I remember when I was a child, there were years that we didn't have rain and everybody was like praying all the time Hashem we need rain the Kinneret is you know is drying <laughs> we don't know what to do and by the way it's very interesting Akadosh Baruch Hu Hashem made Israel a, it's a country that always we have to ask for rain like rain in Israel it's not something that usually you know it's it's like um, something that happens every year and Hashem did it by purpose because the rain in Israel is depend on prayers. For example, in Canada, you don't need to pray for rain. There's too much. We need to pray to we need to pray the opposite to to stop the rain and stop the snow. But in Israel, we pray for rain. Why? Because Hashem wants us to pray. And that's why Israel is located in such a place. But in Israel, there's also snow. In Jerusalem, up north, in Tzfat, in Hermon, there's also snow. And there's a lot of qualities, powers to the snow, and we're going to study Bezat Hashem some of them today. So first of all, we have to understand the meaning of snow, the Kabbalistic meaning of snow. Snow, as we said, it's a female. It's a power of a female. Now what's the reason, the simple reason, that we have snow? Why Hashem can't just do rain all the time and that's it? Why do we need snow? If the purpose of snow is water, we can have water with rain. We don't need the snow for the reason why we have snow, if go, you go ask the scientists, they will tell you that the snow is actually, um, it's very needed. For what? For the land. Because when you put any seed in the, in the land, and you want it to grow, so if it's going to be too cold, it's just going to destroy the seed. The cold is going to destroy the seed. And it's, it's not going to work. So what Hashem is doing, before the cold comes, 
when it's zero minus one, it's not freezing. There's gonna be a snow. The snow is like a carpet on the land. And then, even though it's freezing outside, in the bottom of the snow, the snow, because there's a lot of air, there's 95% of the snow that you see, it's not snow, it's air. 95%. And you know why in the winter, if you want, if you want to, um, if you want to be warm in the winter, it's better to put two, um, layers. two layers that are not very uh, warm, than put like one Canada goose. Why? Because every layer that you put has a certain, you know, air in between. That air, that's what warms you. And that's why more layers you have, it's going to be warmer. Same thing works with the snow, because the snow has a lot of air. That air separates from the cold and the, and the, and the land. And that's why we need the snow for the growings, for the seeds. Back in the days, everybody, their living was depend on the land, on the fruits. And until today, we just don't pay attention to that because we don't work. We don't have, a, you know, a, a, we don't have cucumbers and tomatoes in our backyard like they used to have back then. We go to the supermarket. But really, if there's not going to be snow, you're not going to have tomatoes in Canada. Even not in the summer, because the land, all the seeds that you put in before, are all going to be destroyed. Same thing as the, the, the trees that you put, the seeds of the trees. And that's why we do need the snow. The nature needs the snow. So this is very important for the world. Hashem does everything by purpose. Just to look into it, you know, it's blowing the mind because... Shtabach Shemolad, HaKadosh Baruch Hu makes everything works in this world perfectly. So there's rain and there's snow. Now the snow, rain we always say, Geshem Shel Bracha, rain of uh, blessing. Rain brings blessing. We know uh, if there's rain, there's blessing. The snow is a rain that is freezing. It's a freeze. Everything that is freeze in Kabbalah called dinim. Dinim is judgments. The opposite of kindness. There's two powers in, in, in life. There's power of kindness, chesed, giving. And there's power of judgment, getting. Snow, it's freeze. Freeze, it's the power of judgment. But it's not a pure judgment. It's a judgment with kindness. Snow, it's judgment... It's a sweetened judgment. What does that mean? Because the snow is white. Why Hashem created the snow in, in, in white color? You, you can make it black. You could do it red. You know, any color. Yeah, yeah. It was not. Uh, <laughs> it was not healthy. If you imagine everything is red, it's like really not comfortable. But Baruch Hashem, Hashem made it white to explain. To tell us that the snow, the power, the energy of the snow, it's an energy of a female, of judgment. But it's not a pure judgment. It's a sweetened judgment. What's that mean? You know, a lot of times in our life, we have judgments. We have problems. There's different times, right? There's times that are very good, Baruch Hashem, you are very successful, things going very well, Baruch Hashem, there's parnasa, there's money, there's health, your kids are behaving well, your wife behaving well, everybody behaves well, your husband, yeah, everything is good, this is called mochim de gadlut, this is called good times, kindness, times of kindness, shefa, energy, I get everything Hashem gives me, my pipes are open, but there's opposite also, there's a lot of times of judgment. Our generation, we see it a lot. People have everything, but they don't have everything. They have everything, but they're miserable. Inside, we feel not, not satisfied. full, not satisfied from inside. We, we feel something is not here. No meaning, uh, depression, 
sometimes boring and there's a lot of problems and sometimes real problems health problems you know kids and 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 wants to get married and you know the market is not so good so there's a lot of problems those problems called in 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 kabbalah judgments any problem you have in life it's spiritual judgments on you closing your luck what happens at that time? Hashem tells you that every judgment that comes to you, you see it as a judgment. You see it as, as a bad thing, right? You lost your job. Or you had a boyfriend or whatever and he said, bye-bye. I don't want you anymore. Broke your heart. heart. That's very hard. So then you feel, okay, now it's dark. It's dark in my life. Darkness in my life. So Hashem comes and says, you have to learn from the snow. The snow tells you, uh, 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 teaches you a lesson that every time you see judgment, something freezing, something is not good, it's really white. It's really kindness. But you don't see the kindness right now. Every judgment, kol yerida Every time you go down, it's because now Hashem is planning for you to go up, but big time. And the more you go down, you're gonna go up more. The aliyah going up is gonna be higher and higher according to to the darkness. And we we also see it. Not just in the snow that it's judgment, white judgment. It's we see it also at night. Night is a is a time of judgment. I'll ask you a question. What's the darkest time at night? What's the darkest hour? The beginning of the night, the middle of the night, or the end of the night? What do you think? End of the night. Uh, you you yeah. heard my lecture. <laughs> But really, we would think the middle of the night. Because in the beginning, there's still, you know, there's still, uh, you know, the sun goes down. And, but in the middle, it's going to be the darkest time. Our rabbis teach us that Baal Sulam, he has a whole, um, he has a whole perush, a whole commentary on, 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 uh, on the Zohar. And he writes that the last hour of the night is the darkest time. The darkest time. Right before Alot HaShachar, right before the dawn, it's the darkest time at night. So he asked, why is that like this? Why, 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 why Hashem did it this way? So the, in the end of the night, it's going to be the darkest. Because he wants to show us that when you see the most dark times in your life, that nothing goes like you want, you still have to believe that right now, this is the darkest time, so now it's the dawn coming. The light is coming right now. Just wait. Don't lose your hope. A lot of people, they just lose their hope. They say, okay, fine. I don't believe anymore. I don't want to do that anymore. You know, you fight for something in life, and then you lose your hope. That's the worst thing you can do. Why? Because Hashem tells you, the darkest times, that's the... That's right before the, the light is coming. And, and, and now you have to stay stay strong and believe that Baruch Hashem, Hashem, whatever you do, even though I see it's dark and it's not like I want, this is really white. This is really good. You know, people go outside. Yesterday I spoke to someone. It was, it was snowing. So I said, Makore, Manishma, how are you doing? He says, ah, this snow. I hate it. So then I told him, look, look outside. Look how beautiful it is. It's all white. Try to, you are, ho you are at home right now. It's warm. Try to enjoy the snow. Because there is something good in the snow. Not just what I said that the snow, we really, we really need it for the land. It also looks nice. There's always good things, even in the things that, that are freezing, that are judgment, that are not good. That we think they are not good. 
So this is one lesson that Kadosh Baruch want to tell us with the snow. Snow means in the times of judgment that everything is freezing, is not going the way, it's not moving the way you want. It's not, it's not means that it's bad. From, now, from here, from that, the good things are going to come up. So that's the first thing that we learn from the snow. How do we know if a, ta- if, if, uh, if a year, this year is going to be very cold, it's going to be a lot of snow, or maybe there's some years that are very warm. So I want to tell you in, in Torah, in Kabbalah, our rabbis, they were very into uh, knowing the future. Predicting. Yeah. They thought about it because it's very important sometimes to know every year what's going to happen. So you're going to prepare yourself there. From one hand, there's psukim in the Torah, the sentences in the Torah that say, it's better to not, you know, to not search for the future. You should, you know, leave like you are, do what you need to do, don't think about that. But sometimes... We see in our books the opposite. We see the rabbis do sometimes in different cases think about what's going to be. And one of the questions that brought down in books is sometimes we want to know for parnasa for business, if this is going to be a cold year or a warm year. And one of the things, one of the ways to check it, Hashem gives some hints during the year that we can know. Rabbi Chaim Palaji, 200 years ago, he writes in his book that we have 12 months. The month of Shvat, it's going to be in two months, Bezat Hashem. He says if the month of Shvat falls, if the Rosh Chodesh, the, the first day of Shvat, Fells on a Wednesday, that means that that year is going to be very cold. So you can go to the calendar and to see if the first day of Shvat, yeah, every year, is going to be on Wednesday. If this is on Wednesday, you should know this, you know, buy a ticket to Miami. <laughs> this year it's going to be cold. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth, I didn't check it. <laughs> you are afraid to check. <laughs> I'll tell you why, because... No I, I, no, I checked this year. This year is Monday, so don't worry. Oh, you're, you're but, checking. No, no, this year I checked. Oh. I'm saying I'm, I, I didn't check like other years. Yes, yes. But this year it's Monday, so we, 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 we are okay. Maybe it's going to be cold anyways, but very, very cold, it's when it falls on Wednesday. Now, he says different reasons why Gimatrio, they study it from Parashat Vaigash, from different uh, letters there. We're not going to get into it, but we have to know that this is one of the things that are very interesting in the Torah. There's different days uh, that you can know if in those days something happened, it says something about the future. Yeah? So we spoke a few, I think, a few weeks ago about, maybe, maybe even last week, no, two weeks ago, about um, uh, protection on the ways, you know, how to protect yourself when you go oh, to a vacation, on a yeah, trip. Yeah, you said. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we yeah. said there's certain days that it's good to go to a trip, mm-hmm. and there's certain days that it's like very, that it's not, it's, 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 it's better to stay at home. Yeah. Don't start a trip at that day. Don't, don't buy a house at that day. Yeah, you know, we said, Rashi Tevot Ge'eh. Aleph, Gimel, and He. The first day of the month, according to the Hebrew ca- calendar. The third day of the month, and the fifth day of the month. Are, are not, the energy of those days, are not good. it's not good. Mm-hmm. If you start something in that day, if you start a business that day, if you get married that day, it's, 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 it's allowed to get married, it's allowed. But it's not, it's not the best thing to do. Okay? So, <coughs> so same thing as here. We have certain information. Hashem, Baruch Hashem, gave the Jewish nation certain information to know it's a cold year or it's a warm year. So this is one of the ways to know. There's other ways. We're not going to go into it. I just want to give you one taste of, of something. 
just to understand that this is something that is brought down in the books and, and, and we know this knowledge. Another thing very interesting with snow is the snow is white as we say and there's a reason why it's white. White symbolizes new. New life, new beginning. There's a pasuk. The pasuk say, "Im yu hatatchem kashanim kashel gelbinu." If your sins are gonna be red, like a a kashani, there's a worm that is very red. That has a red color coming out out of this worm, and with this red color, they used to paint things in the in the temple. So if you're if your sins are going to be so red, means so bad, Hashem will make it white and He's going to renew the nation like what? Like snow. Snow symbolizes always something new. Kaparat avonot. Kaparat avonot means clean, scene, clean our sins. That's why in Israel, for example, if there's snow in Israel, it's a very, very good sign. Why? It's a sign that the nation, Hashem forgive them, and things are getting renewed. It's a very good sign if in Israel there's snow. Especially in the places that there's no snow usually. Yeah? I remember when in, in 1992, 1993, I think, there was a lot of snow in Israel. There was a, there was a, there was a good, there was a good year. Yeah? A lot of Russians came to Eretz Yisrael. No, a lot of Jews. A lot of, all the Jews came to Eretz Yisrael. Right? So, there was like a million Jews that came to Israel in one year. So, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And at that year, I have even, you know, pictures. And uh, we lived in Israel. I have pictures of me. I was a, I was a kid. And in and, 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 and the snow. So, Baruch Hashem... <coughs> The snow symbolizes something good, something new. And that's why, for example, the Kabbalists, they use snow for fixing different types of sins. There's something called Gilgul Sheleg. Gilgul Sheleg means to, to, roll. to roll on the snow. Some people that do certain sins, I'm not going to say which kind of sins, but very bad sins, for dear Tikkun, if they want to fix it properly, of course they have to regret, they have to uh, get on themselves to not do it anymore, and tshuva, and all what they need to do. But to fix it fully, Completely. they would need to roll, yeah, yeah without, uh, without uh, clothes. They have to roll in the snow nine times. There's a, there's a certain tikkun. When you do that, and this is a, you know, it's a, don't do this. Yeah, it's very, it's not, uh, it's something that Chaz can can harm your skin. It's, it's really bad. But this is one of the tikkunim, one of the ways that you can fix a certain things. When you get on yourself a certain um, um, suffering, a certain type of suffering, so you can fix certain things in your soul. So that's what they used to do this. You know, like we do tzom, like we fast. Why do we fast on Yom Kippur? Because fasting, it's a suffering for the body. According to Kabbalah and Zohar, whenever you do, a, when you do something and you enjoy it, let's say you make, a, you, you, you make a sin, and the sin, you enjoy the sin. Yeah, you, you just ate a non-kosher shawarma. It's very tasty. So, so okay, or you ate a cheeseburger. Right? So, okay, you had a, you had a good time with the, in the McDonald's with your friends and a cheeseburger. So you, your body absorbed a certain enjoyment. But it's a bad enjoyment. Now this enjoyment, you have to take it out from your body. How are you going to take this out? Suffering. Because that's the opposite of enjoyment. That's why, for example, if someone wants to take out the bad enjoyment out of his body, he is fasting. You fast on Yom Kippur, so you take it out. You take this bad energy that you just absorbed to your body, you take it out. By the way, you can make yourself suffer, or Hashem will make you suffer. By the way, that's the reason why we suffer. <laughs> 
We suffer because our body absorbs bad energy. And the only way to clean it is by suffering. There's another way. Suffering in good things. For example, learning Torah. When a person comes to learn Torah in the snow, and it's very hard to come, and you spend money on the gas, and you come in and uh, you sit, and if the rabbi is boring, it's bechlal, very nice, you know? You want to fall asleep, but you don't fall asleep, because yeah, it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not nice, you know? And then you're suffering for what? For something good, for something holy. This is, takes out from your body the negative energy that you took into the body when you were doing, when you were enjoying bad things. And you cannot run away from it. This suffering has to happen. So that's why the Kabbalists, what they used to do, they said, why should I suffer in my life? I would accept on myself a certain suffering to take, all this, to take this off, and then I'm not going to suffer. That's what they did. So what did they do? They do fasting. Fasting every Monday, every Thursday. They don't eat. They don't enjoy life so much. Why they do that? Because they say, I want to only enjoy positive energy. When you enjoy something that is good, holy, it's a positive energy that you take in. When you enjoy something that is bad, that is not allowed, you enjoy a negative energy. And this is you will take you will have to take it out in a certain time in your life. So certain people, they used to do this thing of Gilgule Shelek, which is a big suffering, to clean themselves. Today we don't do it. Don't try to do it. But there's something similar that we can do. Especially people that did sins that are Gilui Arayot, with the... Um, uh, Gilu Yarayot is, uh, you know, like being with a, a man, with a woman that is not allowed to be, Eshetish, for example, different um, connections, yeah, male and a female, but not allowed. that not allowed, right? Yeah. So, or sometimes it's not a male and a female, sometimes it's a male yeah, and a male, yeah, Shem yeah. Yishmo. So those type of things are, are, are those enjoyments, they get into the body and it's very, very hard to take them off. It's very hard to take them off because it's a very big sin. So after regret and tshuva and all this process that you do to clean yourself from this sin and not doing it anymore, sometimes it's not enough. If you don't want to suffer from this sin during your life, you would need to take it by accepting on yourself certain a certain amount of, of fasting. Or, do girgul shelek, the snow. Now, this rolling in the snow, today, we don't do it because it's very, very hard. And it's, it's some, even sometimes dangerous. So the Ben Ishchai says, but for every person, it's very good one time in his life. And in Canada, it's very easy to do because we have a lot of snow, to take his snow and to put it on your shoulders, you know, take your shoulder, take like your uh, sleeves, you know, take it off and take the snow and on your shoulders nine times like this. On your arm? On your arm, yeah. No, on, on the on the whole arm, from the beginning to the end. The whole arm, do it nine times. Every arm. I know it's going to be a little bit cold, yeah. but you do it for fixing your sins, for cleaning yourself. This is not something that it's a must to do, but it's a good thing for certain one, people to do. Only one arm? Two or arms. Two arms. And the reason is because the arms, it's like the whole body, according to Kabbalah. The arms symbolize the whole body. That's why, for example, in the morning, we do Netilat Yadayim. We just wash our hands. Mm -hmm. And it's taking the impurity out from the whole body. Right? So same thing, the Ben Ishchai say, if you want to do that, that's a nice thing to do. If you want to be a Kabbalist, you know, take a little bit of snow and make it nine times and, and have in mind kaparat avonot, a certain sin that you did. And of course, you, 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 you regret on this and you accept on yourself a new life, but I want to fix it fully. So that's also something that the, the, the Kabbalists do with snow. The snow can... Uh, has a certain power of healing. 
What's the power of healing that the snow has? Basically, in general, everything that is natural has a certain power, right? That's why all the natural things, they're all, um, they heal. People use herbs for healing, you know, even the medicine that we have today, it's made from natural things. The natural things are always going to be better from the conventional thing, the, 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 the chemicals that, 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 that they use, right? Today, everybody wants to be natural because we understand that those chemicals are maybe good for one thing, but it's very bad for a hundred things. But the natural things that Hashem created in the world, they are very good and they're very healthy. So, same thing, snow is natural. It comes from Hashem. It's Maim Elyonim. It's, it's, a, it's a water. And it's, it's a very interesting type of water that comes from Hashem. And it has a certain energy and power. You know, a mikveh, I recently, this week, I did a lecture in Russian about mikveh. The mikveh, it's a, very, it's, it's, a, it's a water with energy. Yeah, we dip in the mikveh. That's one of the most pure, the, 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 the pure things in the world. If you dip in the, into the mikveh, it makes you pure more than anything else in the world. That's why for a woman, it's very important to go to the mikveh. It's, it's balanced all her spiritual, uh, you know, chakras, uh, chakras. Yeah, it's balanced you and it cleans you out from all the negative, uh, all the negative uh, powers that that always wants to, to come close to you. So mikveh, it's very, very important. Something very interesting, mikveh cannot be kosher unless the water of the rain comes directly to the mikveh. If, let's say, I take water from the sea, I take it out, the energy went out. I have, the water has to come directly to the, to the place of the mikveh. So that's why it's very hard to get uh, water for mikveh. Now, something very interesting, snow, because it's in the shape of snow, even if I move the snow from one place to another place, and then the snow melts to a water, it's kosher like a mikveh. If I take water from one place to another place, not kosher anymore, the water lost the energy, it can be kosher for mikveh. But if it's snow, and you take the snow from one place to another place, you can make a mikveh. You can make a mikveh in your house by taking snow. It actually even works for an atilat yadayim. Someone that can't do netilat yadayim, you know, it doesn't have water, is outside. You can dip your hand in the snow three times and it's like netilat yadayim. The snow has a very, very high energy. And that's why snow also has a power of healing. People that have problems, skin problems, you know, pizzaim echomrim. No, no, uh, yeah, different things, different, yeah, yeah, different rush on, 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 on the skin. If you wanna, if you wanna heal this, you know, usually people go to the, to the drug mart and they buy a cream or something. You know, the cream is not good. You know why? Because the cream, you put the cream and then all the chemicals all the oh no the it's it's it helps the place but it goes inside the body the old all the 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 bed yeah it's absorbed inside the body that's why the creams usually and even natural creams yeah, you know, not it's, 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 it's depends. It's not, to not, of course, if there's no other way, of course you have to use the cream. But a lot of times the creams, they will heal it for now, but because it, ca it's, it's, it's absorbs inside the body, the, it didn't heal it really. And that's why it's going to come from another place. So there's something else is going to come out from, from, from another place in the body. So anyway, this is a different subject. But if you want to heal skin rush, different problems in the skin, you can take snow, you can melt it, and the water, you just put it on your, on your skin. Just warm it. Take the snow as it is and put it in, uh, I don't know, in a pot and warm it. And after 
take the water and you put it on the skin a few times, one times a day, two times a day, or even drink it, especially for kids. Kids uh, that have, you know, a skin rush and stuff like that, you can use it instead of using creams. We have a lot of snow, Baruch Hashem. Half of the year there's snow in here. Just go outside and grab some snow, clean snow, yeah? yeah. And melt it and, and put it on him. It's going to heal. That's what our rabbis hundreds of years ago, they say that this is one of the powers of, of snow that has this natural power of healing problems in the skin. And we also, we study it from the parasha. The, the Torah talks about... You know, the first time that the, the word snow brought down in the Torah, it has a connection to skin. Why? Because when, when Hashem came to Moshe and told him, Moshe, you're going to go to Egypt and, and take, them, take the nation out of Egypt, he says, you're going to be the man. So Moshe says, no, I don't want to go. And then he says, no, you're going to go. So he says, they're not going to believe me. So he says, ah, they're not going to believe you? That's what you, how you talk about my nation. So take your hand, put it under your arm, and I'll take it out, and you'll see that you have a skin rush that looks like snow. In a yadav at kashalik. His hand has a rush like snow. And that's what happened. So the first time snow comes in the Torah, brought down in the Torah, has to do with skin. And why? Because Moshe Rabbeinu spoke bad things about the nation. He said, they're not going to believe me. How do you know? Why, why, why are you so suspicious about them? And maybe they're, they're, they're good people. Maybe, maybe they're going to believe you. Why you say that? So that's why, from here, by the way, we study that a person that speaks Lashon Ara, he gets disease in the skin. If you see someone has a problem with the skin, and you remember we spoke about healing and connection between every mitzvah and a certain organ, the skin usually have problems when you speak Lashon Ara. When you speak bad things, talking about people bad things, this is cause problems in the skin. So that's why, Chaz Shalom, when you have problems in the skin, before you go to the doctor, you make sure you clean your mouth, you know, and you do you regret on this, and you, you start a new beginning. Don't speak Lashon Ara about people. That's very important. By the way, sometimes you can even know it by the dreams. You know, the Ben Ishchai brings down a very interesting uh, question that, that one of his students came to him once and told him that he had a dream about bees. Like bees coming all over him and wants to bite him. And, so he says, every dream that you see, usually there are certain times that the dreams are true. There are certain times that are not true, right? For example, if you see the dream in the beginning of the night, no. don't pay attention to that dream. Also in the middle of the night, don't pay attention to that dream. Only if you see the dream in the morning, before you wake up. And if you wake up at 12 in the afternoon, that's not the morning, yeah? It means morning means uh, from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock, this is mean morning. At that time, if you see a dream, that most like this is maybe has a certain meaning. Those dreams are coming from angels, not from demons. And that's why those dreams are, could be something for yourself to, to know about your future. The dreams that Hashem gives us, it's because sometimes He wants us to understand something that we need to do in life. So if you see bees, so the, the Torah says that... The bee speaks Lashon Ara. The bee has a certain uh, character that the bee speaks bad things about the uh, other bees. They have this, that's, maybe that's why they do always uh, zzz, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they speak bad things about, uh, they have that character of speaking Lashon Ara. That's why if you see bees in the, in, the, in the dream, that means you have a problem with Lashon Ara. Hashem warns you. You have to do tshuva. You have to regret on this. You have a problem with this. Give you messages. Yeah. So, same thing. When we have a problem in the skin, this is says about the shonara. Same thing happened to Miriam. Miriam, the sister of Moshe. Right? She spoke bad things about Moshe. 
She says, why? The, the, he he uh, divorced his wife. Why? Because he is a prophet. So I'm going to also divorce my, my, my husband. I'm also a prophet. I speak to God, so I divorce. They, she thought she is like Moshe. She's in the level of Moshe. So she spoke bad things. She put him down. Oh, you speak Lashon Ara about your brother? What was the punishment she got? She has a skin rush like snow. Again, snow has a certain connection to this. That's why snow can heal it. The problems in the skin. So that's a, another... Uh, yeah, unfortunately, the doctors, they don't, they don't know that, you know. <laughs> they don't study Torah. Okay. It would be a lot cheaper if we would know that, <laughs> how to use that. You go to the that drug mart today, you want to buy a cream for the skin. It's like $50 sometimes, you know. It's like very, very expensive. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You can try it. Uh, try and tell me. I didn't try. I didn't try on my on my uh, kids. Yeah, I used the cream, <laughs> but uh, no, because I didn't know that. <laughs> and it's not always snowing, you know. <laughs> uh, well, uh, in the world, in the in the winter, it's a, it's a, it's a, you can try it. Okay. So yeah. So now, very interesting. That we said that the snow is white and symbolize new page, new life. One of the most important things in life, if we want to be really successful, Rabbi Nachman from Breslev says, we should learn from the snow to be white. What means to be white? Pure. Be white means doesn't matter what happened to you, doesn't matter how your backyard looks like. When the snow comes, everything is clean and white. Doesn't matter how you, what, what, what did you do in life? Hashem says, you can start a new beginning every day. And that's what you should do. Why people get into depression and problems, anxiety? Why? Because they do bad things. They realize that they don't, they don't do what they need to do. And then they just they blame themselves. They, blame themselves. Yeah. they they just feel that feeling they blame themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm not good. Look, I'm not successful. I don't have power. I'm lazy. All those things that we think, we don't say it, we think it. It's bad. It's very bad. Hashem says you have to learn. That doesn't matter what happened in life. Now start a new beginning. Whatever happened, happened. I don't care about that anymore. And now I'm a new person. That's the chidush. That's the new thing that the snow comes to teach us. Doesn't matter what happened in the road. When the snow comes, everything is clean. Doesn't matter what happened in your life. You have to start a new beginning every day. Rabbi Nachman and Breslev, they asked him, How did you get to that level? That you're only 38 years old, and you know the whole Torah, and you have Ruach HaKodesh, you know the future, and every person that gets into your house, you know everything about him. How is that possible to a person that is 38 years old? He passed away when he was 39. Mm -hmm. And so many books and things. So you know what he told him? He told him one thing. Actually, he told him two things. But one thing is, what we're we talking about. He told him that every day, I was starting a new beginning in my life. And sometimes in the same day, I started over and over and over, 10 and 20 times a new beginning. So for example, I fell in something. I didn't do it. Yeah? For example, he drinks water. And you know, when we drink water, we have to say a bracha. Mm -hmm. And when we say a bracha, we have to say the bracha with intention. Not just like, you know, some people like, <laughs> that's not a bracha. Bracha, it's, 
You're bringing Shefa, you're bringing energy from the, the, the upper worlds. If we're going to learn, we have to learn like four years what's a bracha. What you do, Kabbalistically, what you do when you say Baruch. You know, the people that learn in Kabbalah, in, in Kabbalah Yeshiva, when they say bracha on the water, they say Baruch. Then there's three or four pages of different names and intentions that they have. And then they say Ata, another three pages. <laughs> and they Hashem, six pages. <laughs> that's, that, that's to say Baruch Ata Hashem. That's to say Baruch Ata Hashem. We understand what you do. And what energy you take from what world, from what place, from what, what sphira. So we have to have also, I'm not saying that we have to do that, right? But again, that's very complicated. So when we say bracha, at least we will say it with intention. So Rabbi Nachman and Breslev, sometimes he would say a bracha, but he was not saying bracha with intention. So the same day he was saying, okay, okay, that's it. I start a new beginning. Now I'm going to say bracha with intention. And then again he doesn't say bracha with intention. With Kavana, with focus. And then he says, okay, lo meshane, lo nora, that's okay. Now I'm going to do a bracha with, with focus. He teaches us that doesn't matter how, much, how many times you fell, you have to learn to stand up, to start a new beginning. That's one of the most important rules in life. If we're not going to do that, we cannot be tzaddikim, we cannot be righteous. There's only one way to be righteous. It's to know how to stand up when you fell. Kisheva? Huh? Kisheva Kisheva veka. Veka. Yeah. Huh? A tzaddik falls sometimes 1,000 times also. I'm, I'm not saying now, okay, so, okay, I'll, fall, I'll, I'll, I'll be falling all the time. No. Chaz shalom. You have to try your best. But if it's happened, you have to understand. Whatever happened, happened. That's it. I erase it from my life. You know, buy an eraser and start to erase things of your life. That's very important. Something bad that happened to you, something that you were not successful, I erase it. That's it. I don't think about that anymore. Next. Now I'm a new person. Now I'm a new person. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's another thing we study from the um, from the snow. Okay. Now, by the way, the white color, Hashem makes the snow white because white is pure. White symbolizes new, pure. By the way, if you want to have a good feeling at home, a pure feeling, why we put? white maps on Shabbat and everything is white why white? because white calms you down and tells you you are a new person whatever happened I don't care now it's a new life and that's the whole concept of Shabbat like stop for one second for one day and understand that whatever happened happened now it's Shabbat now it's a new beginning. It's a new week starting. We should not take the garbage from the, the week to the next week. We should erase it. So start a new beginning. White. That's why white, for example, if you want to ask for forgiveness, because white, it's kapara. It's, it's forgiveness. Erase what happened. If you want to ask someone for forgiveness, so wear white clothes, and he will forgive you. <laughs> Why? No, that's really, that's serious. Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, he teaches every color has a certain power, right? We have to make a, you know, we have to make a shiur on colors. Right. Maybe next time. Blineda. Blineda. Every color has a, has a power. Red color is judgment, right? The blue color, the light blue color is against eye, evil eye. Very good for evil eye. Different colors has different powers. Yeah, green color is mercy. Yeah. No, no, that, that's we're gonna make a shiur. We're gonna make a class. <laughs> on it, so I don't want to make the class right now. <laughs> huh? 
Black, it's like, uh... We're gonna speak, Bezad Hashem. There's different things. Aval white symbolize forgiveness. That's why Rabbi Moshe Cordovero says, if you want to go to a war and you will you want to be like very strong, aggressive, wear red. It's gonna give you aggressive power. And if you wanna have a feeling or other people that surround you will have a feeling of forgiveness so we're white so on Yom Kippur we were white <laughs> why because we have to forgive everyone <laughs> so you come white and they say ah, hey, I'm sorry okay fine <laughs> <laughs> you are white I'm white everything is okay we're all clean today so Bemet, let's say you did something to your wife and she's mad at you you know just wear white clothes and come and say Ishti, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. By the way, one of the most important things in life is to say sorry. The matter is to say sorry. Hashem says, if you know how to ask for forgiveness, if you know how to not say back, answer back, answer back to someone that does something bad to you, that means you forgive him. You have this, this character. He says, the whole world stands on you. If you want to get a blessing from a person, and you want the blessing to work like 100%, find a person that someone embarrassed him in front of other people, more than 10 people, and tell him, please don't answer back. Please don't answer back. Don't revenge. Just forgive him. And if he does it, put his hand on your head and tell him, give me a bracha. <laughs> okay. There was Rabbi Kanievsky. He lives today in Bnei Brak. He's 95 years old. A big, big tzaddik, righteous person. One time a person came to him with his wife. They have no children, 15 years. No children. Says, we tried everything. All the doctors in, this, in, the, in Israel, they know us. What we do? We want a blessing from the rabbi. So the rabbi said, I can't bless you. I know it's not going to work. You need something more. More powerful. So they said, what do you mean? More powerful than you? So he said, yes. You have to find someone that they embarrass them in public. And he doesn't answer back. Just forgive. And ask a blessing from him. And he's like, where do I going to find someone like this? He says, I don't know, but... Bracha v'atzlacha. That's what you have to do. And one day, he was in a wedding. And you know, you sit in the table, 10 people in one table. And I don't know, one guy, I don't know, did something, whatever. He took from him money and he didn't give... Whatever happened there. And he stood up and started to... Mamash, to curse him. Swear. And the guy got embarrassed and he was sitting beside him and said, Achi, brother, please. You know, everything's from Hashem. Don't answer back. Everything is from Hashem. It's kaparat avanot. It's cleaning your sins. Please don't answer back. And he's like, okay. And he didn't answer back. And after that, he took his hand and says, Give me a bracha to have a child. <laughs> and he's like, What do you want from me? <laughs> he says, Give me a bracha to have a child. And he says, Okay, you should have children. At the same month, his wife got pregnant. No doctors, no nothing. Same month. You understand? This is a blessing of someone that knows how to forgive, to not, to not, you know, to not answer back. So that's why the, the snow is white. Now there's a person, there's a rabbi that lived 2,000 years ago, 2,200 years ago. His name was Hillel. Hillel Azaken. Hillel was a very famous rabbi. And he actually teaches a very big lesson that happened with him with snow. 
One time Hillel, he was a student. And he was a very poor person. He didn't have money. His job was cutting trees. So he used to cut trees and sell them. But he used to make only one coin every day. And back then, to go to study in yeshiva cost money. You know, the money of the yeshiva they have to spend on security and everything. So, if you want to go into the yeshiva to study that night, that day you have to pay half a coin. And he was getting a, a coin every day, which was very low, you know, mm. payment. So he took this less than minimum payment that he got, cut it to half, half of the coin he gave to the family to eat something, and the other half he used to use for getting into the, the yeshiva to study from the big rabbis, Shmaya uh, Avtalion, uh, were the, the big rabbis of that generation. You know, today people, the, the, the Shiure Torah for free, they give you food and give, give you sushi and, and you don't come. <laughs> Back in the days, they used to pay and, <laughs> and go to Shiurim. Anyways, so he goes and he pays every day. And one day, you know, people didn't buy. So he only, the salary of that day was only half a coin. So, you know, the, 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 the wife and the kids are starving. He can't, you know, not buy food. So he bought food to the house, but he couldn't get to the, to the yeshiva. So there was a window. So he said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up the building and, 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 listen. and listen from the window. And it was a very cold day. And he was listening the whole time. The whole night they were studying. And then the snow was starting to fall, to, to fall. And more snow and more. There was a lot of snow on him and he was listening and listening and then there was so much snows that he just lost his uh, his conscious until the morning he was there in the snow in the morning four o'clock in the morning the rabbis come to the show first they come and they see him it's still dark usually the, the, the sun rises at that time it's still dark. Why it's dark? So they look at the window. They say, oh, there's so many. So, so Something is blocking. So they went outside to see. And they see a lot of snow. And they see a human being in, under the snow. Some of the rabbi says it was Shabbat. So they took him out. And they warmed water on Shabbat. Which is not allowed usually. But it's Pikuach Nefesh. You can die for him. And they saved his life. And Chachamim say, look, a person wants to study Torah, he almost killed himself for studying Torah. So that's a very interesting story that we study. The question is, why snow? Why this has happened with snow? Why what's the snow comes to symbolize here? So our rabbi says that it was something very weird because in Babylon, when they lived, there's no much of snow. But that day, it was snowing. So, Bemet, one of the explanations is, Hashem wanted to show to all the generations in the history how much a person should give to go and study Torah. Here in Canada, you know, there was on Monday, we have a, Monday, I have a class on Monday. So, it was snowing a lot on Monday and it was very dangerous even to drive so I thought at that day you know usually this uh, I have a shiur usually like 40 50 people come every class and I said okay I'm gonna make a shiur for five people this time I'm sure that they, they know snowing they, it's hard and and Baruch Hashem we didn't have so much but we have like 20 30 people came and I said to them, you know how much reward you get right now? You sacrifice so much. You know, when it's snowing outside, you don't want to come out of the house. You just want to stay at home. Especially if your car is, you know, it's not good with snow. But you say, no, I'm going to come to a shiur Torah. 
I'm going to make an effort to come to Shi'ul Torah. I want to tell you a secret. What happens when you do so, such a thing? In Kabbalah, there's something called Ibur Neshama. Ibur Neshama means a soul of someone else gets inside your soul and connects inside you. When it happens, it happens when you make a certain mitzvah that usually, you, you did it like the best way you can. I'll give you a story to understand. The Arizal lived 500 years ago. One time, he had a, he had a, the students that comes all the time to, to study. So they were studying. And one time, one of the youngest students, he was 16 years old. He came to the shul. And then Arizal, the teacher, the big rabbi, he stood when he got in. At 16 years old, I got in. And the rabbi stands for him. All the other students were shocked. What happened here? And he continued the class. After the class, they come to the rabbi and says, Rabbi, explanations. Well, 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 why you stand in front of Rabbi Shmuel Di Ozida? That was his name. He says, I didn't stand in front of him. I stand as Ben Yair. Who is Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair? Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair, he was the father-in-law of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the one who wrote the Zohar. And Rabbi, Sh Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair was a very holy person. Yeah? Even his donkey was holy. You remember I told, told you about his donkey? The donkey of Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair, it's a donkey that every food that you give him, he knows if it's kosher or not. If it's not kosher, he's not going to take it. He's not going to eat it. He, he, smells the, he smells it. If you did maaser, you know what's maaser? If you give him a vegetable, you know in Israel, every vegetable you take, you have to do 10%. Let's say you have 10, 100 cucumbers, you have to take 10 cucumbers and give it to the donation. Right? It's called maaser. If you would give a cucumber to, uh, to, the, um, to the donkey, the donkey would feel if you did maaser or you didn't do maaser. If you did a 10% or not. The donkey of Pimpin has been here. So this is the donkey of him. <laughs> Imagine who is he. So he was a very holy guy. He says his soul came with him. What does that mean? So he told them he made a certain mitzvah now. Certain good thing, mitzvah, that the soul of Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair, Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair, he did the same mitzvah in his life. And because he did it so much, so good, gave his maximum to this mitzvah, his soul connected to him, ibur neshama. And now it helps him. You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning or one time in, your, in, 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 in the day, during the day, you feel like you have powers to do things. You have power to do a certain mitzvah. A lot of times it comes because a certain soul of a righteous person just got inside you. Why? Because you just did a mitzvah that was connected to that person. And because of that, you got a one spark of his soul. That gives you powers and helps you in your spiritual way. For example, another, so, so this guy, Rabbi Shmuel Di Ozida, they came to him and said, What did you do? What mitzvah did you do today? He says, When I came out of the house, I saw someone screaming. And then I came there and I saw that there were robbers, that they robbed the house. And they took all their clothes. And they were like naked. So I had my jacket. So I said, Okay, I'm going to give you my jacket. Take it. So you have something to wear. It was cold in Sfat. In Sfat. And he went home to take the Shabbat clothes. So he says, you see, I have the Shabbat clothes because I gave him my jacket. I did Gemilut Chasadim. This is, was a mitzvah that Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair used to do all his life. He was very good in this mitzvah. And that's why when you did it, you gave whatever you have for this. A spark of his soul got inside you. And now you're connected to this tzaddik. And each one of us, for example, let's say you have a guest coming to your house. And you decide, I'm going to behave the best I can. I'm going to make everything I can so the guests are going to be happy. 
הכנסת אורחים פולי, I'm going to study the, 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 the הלכות, the laws of הכנסת אורחים, I'm going to go out with them four steps and, and, and you know, and I'm going to do anything I can do to make this mitzvah the best I can. If you do that, a spark of one of the rabbis or righteous people, for example, Avraham, Avraham Avinu, for him, uh, hosting people, hospitality was the, the, the highest mitzvah of Avraham Avinu. So now, a spark of his neshama can get inside you and helps you in your spiritual way. You get powers. By the way, you can get a lot of sparks of a lot of tzaddikim. But then you can lose them also. How do you lose them? The second you get angry, you lose all the sparks. All the sparks goes away. You could do a lot of mitzvot. You make a mitzvah of hospitality, you make a mitzvah of minut chasadim, helping people, and you make a mitzvah of tefillin, like the best you can, and tzitzit, and sukkah, and coming to shiur in the snow. But, you get angry, they can't stay inside you. That's why anger is very, very, very bad. We should stay away from anger as much as we can. But now, by coming to Shiur Torah in the snow, what can you get? You can get a spark from who? From Hillel. That he was going to a Shiur Torah to listen in the snow. So did you stand yesterday? Huh? Did what? You stand on Monday? No, ah, in front of those people, yeah. You can get if you do it really, you know, <laughs> the best you can. And then you can get a spark from Hillel. What's good about getting a spark from Hillel? You know what was so special about Hillel at Sadiq? Hillel at Zaken. There's a story, there's a lot of stories about him. It's already late. Hillel at Zaken, he was a person that never gets angry. Never gets angry. The Gemara says that there were two people that they bet on 400 coins. It was a lot of money. That one of them says, I'm going to make Hillel angry. Trust me. So he came on Friday. Why? Because Friday, that's the day of anger. You should know. Friday, there's energy in the atmosphere that there's a lot of dinim, there's a lot of judgment. You should stay very away of anger on Friday. We should be very, very careful with this. So he said, I'm going to come on Friday. And at the time that he goes to shower, when he just opened the water, I'm going uh, I'm gonna to scream. Now he was the chief rabbi of Israel. So he came and he screams in his window, Mika Nilel, who is Hilel? You know, that's how he talks to a rabbi. Who is Hilel? I need him. So Hillel goes out of the shower, puts his, you know, like uh, clothes, and says, Yes, my son, what do you want? He says, I have a question. You are Hillel? He says, Yes. What, what's the question? It was Israeli. Yeah, what's the question? <laughs> he says, The question is, tell me, why Chinese people have this eyes, those eyes? <laughs> So he says, oh, that's a very, very interesting question. That's a very important question. You know why? Because they used to live in, in uh, places when there's a lot of sand and wind. And that's why, because they do this all the time, you know. Like, so the sand would not get to your eyes. So that's why Hashem made the, your eyes shaped like this. Everything, there's a purpose. Psh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. He goes away. He waits until Hillel gets to the shower again. He just opens the water. <laughs> and then he comes again. Mika Nilel, who is Hillel? And he is like, okay, fine. He gets dry again, puts his clothes, go outside. Ken, yes, my son. I have another question to you. He says, why does the African have a big foot? So he tells him because there's a lot of bitzot. Bitza, it's um, there's a lot of mud where they live, huh? Swamp. Swamp. Yeah, there's a lot of can. Yeah. Whatever you said, huh? Swamp. Swamp. When they where they live, so they need this. They need the big foot. 
Okay, fine. And he did it like three, four times like this. He goes to the shower, calls him again. And he see that Hillel is very calm. He's like, yes, what you want, everything for you. And then the last time he says, I have a question. So he comes again and he says, you are, you are Hillel, the chief rabbi that everybody talks about? He says, yes. He says, Shelo yirbuk motcha Israel. I wish there's not going to be any more people like you in the world. So he says, why are you, st- why are you telling me this? I was so nice to you. So he says, because, because of you, I just lost 400 coins. <laughs> so he says, it's better you lose 800 coins and I don't get angry even for one second. Because, and that's, that's who is Ilel. Hillel knew how to accept everything with love and happiness. So if you want to have a happy life, you better come to the shoe in the snow <laughs> and you get a spark from Hillel. <laughs> you're going to be very calm and nice. To say, I'm sorry. I said, I said I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, how the snow affects the memory. So in two, two minutes. Okay. So this is the big secret, big secret. The word shichecha, shichecha, it's to, for, to forget. To forget in Hebrew it's shichecha. The numerical value of it is 333. Snow is shelig. Shin is 300. Lamed is 30. Gimel is 3. Also 333. So to forget and snow, it's the same numerical value. It has a certain connection. Arizal say. If you go outside and you take snow with your right hand and you put it on your forehead three, three times from the left to the right, three times like this, and you have in mind that snow taking out all the, the power of forgetting, like you're not going to forget anymore, yeah, gives memory, helps to not forget, do it three times. And if you can do also another thing, it's going to even be, work better. Have in mind three times Aleph. The, the letter Aleph, 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 Aleph. Three times when you put it on your forehead. And if you can do, have in mind Aleph, not like the letter Aleph, how we say it, like Aleph, Lamed, Pei, right? Because Aleph, it's Aleph, Lamed, Pei. So have in mind Aleph, Lamed, Pei, Aleph, Lamed, Pei, Aleph, Lamed, Pei. Just have a, just have a, like a meditation on it. When you do the snow, if you do that, you're going to have a very good memory. And here in Canada, we can do it a lot of times every day. You can go check, take just a little bit of snow and do that. And Bezat Hashem, you're going to, you're going to, uh, you're going to <laughs> memorize everything you want. Bezat Hashem, your memory is going to be very strong until the age of 120. Amen v'amen. So that's a secret, yeah. I want to bless all of you, Bezat Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu should fulfill all your wishes, and Bezat Hashem makes all of us happy Amen. and strong, Amen. and Bezat Hashem we will have a lot of powers to come to Shiure Torah, Amen. and to spread the world of Torah, Amen. and Bezat Hashem, whatever those people, all the effort that you did, HaKadosh Baruch Hu should pay you in the world to come, and in this world also. Amen Amen. 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 Yes, if there's questions.